You're making a grilled cheese. Simple, right? Butter, bread, cheese. You press the sandwich down in the pan, and as it heats up, the cheese melts into that perfect gooey layer. Golden, stretchy. But here's something that might surprise you. That slice of cheese in your hand? It's milk, controlled spoilage. You're eating dairy that's been deliberately infected with bacteria, sliced with enzymes from a calf's stomach, and aged in caves filled with mold spores. And the reason it doesn't rot? It's already rotting, just slowly, in exactly the right way. So how does liquid milk become solid cheese? What happens when cheese ages? And why does something this disgusting taste so good? Let's explore the process. Cheese is one of humanity's oldest foods. We've been making it for at least 7,000 years. The story goes that someone in ancient Mesopotamia stored milk in a pouch made from an animal's stomach. Hours later, the milk had separated into curds and liquid. That accidental discovery was the birth of cheese. Animal stomachs contain rennet. Rennet causes milk proteins to clump together. Instead of staying liquid, they form a gel. For thousands of years, that's how people made cheese. Milk plus rennet plus time. But here's the thing. Most cheese today isn't made with calf stomach enzymes. Lab-grown rennet instead. But the process? Still the same basic steps. So, how do you make cheese? Let's start with milk. Fresh milk from a cow, goat, or sheep. The first step is pasteurization. Milk heated to 72 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds. This kills harmful bacteria, but also beneficial ones. Cheesemakers add them back. Step 2. Add the culture. Culture is just bacteria. Specific strains for specific cheeses. Lactococcus lactis for cheddar. Streptococcus thermophilus for mozzarella. Propionobacterium for Swiss. That's what creates the holes. The bacteria eat lactose and produce lactic acid. The milk gets more acidic, affecting texture and flavor. The milk sits with the culture for 30 minutes to a few hours. The bacteria multiply. Now comes the magic part. Rennet. Rennet is enzymes that cause a chemical reaction. Casein proteins link together and form a gel. This is coagulation. Within 30 to 45 minutes, the liquid milk becomes a custard-like solid. This is the curd. The watery liquid left behind is whey. Here's the kicker. The tighter the curd, the harder the final cheese. Soft cheese like brie? You barely cut the curd. Hard cheese like Parmesan. You cut it into tiny pieces and cook it, squeezing out as much whey as possible. Cheesemakers cut the curd with long knives or wires into cubes, then stir. As they're stirred, they release whey. The more you stir and heat, the firmer the cheese. For cheddar, the curds are heated to 38 degrees Celsius and stirred for 30 to 40 minutes. For mozzarella, they're heated higher and stretched while hot. Once the curds reach the right texture, the whey is drained. What's left looks like cottage cheese, crumbly, squeaky. For fresh cheeses like mozzarella, you're done. Add salt, shape it, eat it. But for aged cheeses, the transformation hasn't even started. Aging is where cheese becomes cheese. The curds are pressed into molds. Big wheels for Parmesan. Small rounds for Camembert. Pressure squeezes out remaining whey. Then the cheese is salted, either by rubbing salt on the outside or soaking in brine. Salt draws out moisture and controls which bacteria and molds can grow. Because that's what aging is. Controlled rot. The cheese moves to an aging room. Temperature and humidity carefully controlled. Cheddar needs cool and dry. Brie needs warmer and humid. As the cheese ages, enzymes and bacteria 
break down proteins and fats, creating new flavor compounds. Sharpness in cheddar comes from protein breakdown. Nutty sweetness in Gruyere from fat breakdown. Blue cheese gets its streaks from Penicillium roqueforti, a mold that grows in air pockets. Brie gets its white rind from Penicillium camemberti on the surface. Parmesan ages for a minimum of 12 months. Some wheels age for 36 months or longer. Moisture decreases. Texture becomes granular. Flavor intensifies. Those crunchy white crystals? Amino acid clusters. Cheddar can be aged from three months to several years. Young cheddar is mild and creamy. Aged cheddar is sharp and crumbly. Swiss cheese gets its holes from carbon dioxide bubbles produced by Propionibacterium. As it ages, gas forms pockets. The cheesemaker's job during aging is to monitor and adjust. Flip the wheels. Brush off unwanted molds. Control humidity. You can't rush it. Now here's the wild part. The cheese you buy at the grocery store? Most of it is designed not to age. Pre-sliced cheese. Cheese singles. Shredded cheese. Made to stay exactly the same from the day they're packaged. Often mixed with emulsifiers and preservatives. American cheese isn't technically cheese. It's a cheese product. Real cheese blended with emulsifiers. It doesn't age. Real age cheese is alive. Bacteria and enzymes still working inside it. Changing every day. And here's what gets me. Cheese is one of the few foods where we actively want bacteria and mold. We cultivate them. We protect them. In any other context, we'd call that contamination. With cheese, we call it artisan. So, let's go back to that grilled cheese. You press the sandwich in the pan. The cheese melts. But now you know that cheese started as liquid milk, deliberately infected with bacteria. You know it was coagulated with enzymes, cut into curds, drained of whey, pressed, salted, and aged. You know that aging isn't preservation. It's controlled decomposition. Bacteria and molds breaking down proteins and fats. You know the holes in Swiss are carbon dioxide bubbles. The white crystals in Parmesan are amino acid clusters. The blue veins are mold colonies. You know fresh cheese is days old, but aged Parmesan might be three years old. The next time you eat cheese, you'll taste time. You'll taste bacteria doing what they do best. You'll taste the difference between controlled rot and chaos. That's the process. We reveal how things actually work, one story at a time. If there's something you'd like us to explore next, let us know. Until then, trust the process.